All right, we're ready to begin. A uh, couple of reminders again, uh, the locker room is now open. Uh, and also, uh, video is not permitted in the interview room. If you need video, you can secure that down the hall on the left in the video distribution area. So we'll ask uh, Coach Williams for some general thoughts on the game, and then we'll take questions just for the two student athletes, uh, excuse them, and then finish up with Coach Williams. So, Coach, would you begin? Uh, we'll, we'll just go straight to questions. Thanks for asking, though. All right, let's go to questions for either of the student athletes. If you'll raise your hand, we'll get a remote microphone to you, and let's start right here on the front row. This is for both players. Maybe Henry could take it first. Um, you know, well, Walsh Banks in a three at the buzzer. They're up 13. You're thinking, wow, if you're Arkansas, you're feeling pretty good. What was the mindset at halftime? And what, what, what do you guys think was the key to the comeback in the second half and really holding them down defensively? It was Henry? <clears throat> yeah, if I, if Henry could take it first. Okay. And then to, uh, I would wait. say none of the guys on the team panicked. Our leaders stepped up and said the right things. You know, coaches came in and, you know, prepared us for the second half. Uh, we weren't really playing Texas A&M basketball in the first half. Um, I thought our ability to get downhill, get to the free throw line, control the glass um, in the second half was a huge key. And then I think some of the guys that came off the bench, um, Anderson, uh, Solomon, Dre, came with tremendous energy. You know, they're, they're – they do stuff that's not quantitative that, you know, you're not going to see it in the box score right here, but those guys' energy, how they play defense, you know, um, how they space the floor on offense, um, is kind of the reason why we won today. So credit to those guys. Same for Wade. Um, we went into halftime talking about more on the positive side. You know, they hit a three at, at, the, bu I mean, at the buzzer off the glass. Um, can't really control that. So we just went into halftime talking about the things we control, trying to control the controllables. Um, we were doing tremendous on the offensive glass. Um, I think they only had maybe – um, two offense rebounds, so we were doing pretty good on defensive glass, too. So just trying to come out in the second half and just continue to control the things we control and put some stops together. Another question on the front row. Wade, I know it's a, a simple play, but what goes into your kind of drawing, the reverse drawing the charge? I know you kind of took one there in the second half. And do you feel like even a simple play like that can kind of shift the momentum? Re reverse drawing where, the where charge? You, where you, you stop and the guy oh, gets oh, you, yeah. Oh, um, I knew we were, we got to the bonus very, very fast, which was, uh, I think, a big key to the game. And I knew um, he was trailing me, so I kind of just wanted to stop in my tracks and see, um, see how it played out. And we got two free throws out of it. All right, let's go to about in the middle, about the third row or so. This one's for Henry. Uh, what are your thoughts on that kind of, I think it was an 11-point run you had come out of the second half that kind of flipped the script and helped bring the, help give you all the momentum for the rest of the it game? It was amazing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought it was, it was good, but it really wasn't the offensive end. It was the defensive end. We were able to get, you know, three stops in a row. We were able to kind of turn them over. We were able to start playing Texas A&M basketball. Um, you know, the defense was um, – the offense was a result of our defense. I thought our defense was, you know, locked in the second half. Guys were playing in passing lanes. Guys were willing to take charges and stay in the drive and just do stuff that Texas A&M is known for and that we practice every every day. Let's go to the question, question on the left side. Wade, take us through your steal with four and a half minutes left, one end, then drive the length of the floor for the layup as well. Um. We were in, I think we were in five, cold or something. Um, yeah, cold to five. And um, I switched off on one of, the, one of the bigger guys, one of their post guys, and I just tried to, you know, hold my ground. And um, they shot it and got it back. And I just kind of, like, tried to uh, be a gnat, like Coach always say, and just try to get it out. And then I, um, I got it. And we had maybe, like, a four on three. And we had Dex and Dre running, and they both were athletic guys. So I kind of, like, told them I was going to throw the alley-oop, and both of the players went with them, and I just tried to, tried to finish it. <laughs> I think we have a question back on the on the end. There you go. Wade, uh, Smith, number three, hurt you guys in the first half. I think he had 13. I think he had three in the second half. Was there any special emphasis to slow him down in the second half? Um, just continue just to stay in the drive. Uh, he's a phenomenal player. He really helps their team. Um, he's very long. Um, just try to stay in the drive and, and, make, it, and make it his shots um, pretty much tougher. Pretty much that's it. Yeah, let's go back to the front row. Do you have one? Uh, okay, you, you guys, maybe this is for both. Maybe uh, Henry could take it first. Hey, you guys didn't get your, you guys are obviously leading the nation in free throws made, through free throws attempted, so that's your game. Um, and you didn't get your first free throws until like 220 something left in the first half. Then the second half, you really got the line converted. Well, what was the key to that? I would say first we, to even get to that point, we had to get defensive stops. In the first half, we weren't getting defensive stops. And you don't get defensive stop, you can't. 
you know, really play offense how you want to. And so I think starting on the defensive end, you know, we got our confidence from our defense. And that's just Texas A&M basketball. I think our guards have a unique ability to kind of, you know, use their, use their ball handling ability and get downhill and create, you know, un unfair advantages for the bigs and stuff on the other team. And I think that's what the guards did tonight. Um, but it really started on the defensive end. Is that same for Wade? Can you repeat it? Yeah, you, you, you guys oh, didn't, oh, get, oh, you oh, guys oh, didn't yeah. get your first free throws yeah. in the first half to like two something left. Only got two. And then the second half, I think you guys got 22 attempts. Yeah. And that's obviously, mm -hmm. you know, the, the way you guys have played most of the year. You lead the nation in makes and attempts. What, what, what do you think was the key to only getting two in the first half and then a bunch in the second half like, like you usually do? <laughs> Um, like Henry said, it started on the defense end. Once we get stops and targets, we are able to play in transition, and that's easier to get to the uh, get to the paint and get to the rim. Um, we try to play off two feet and get inside to our big guys like Henry, Henry and Jude. They they were tremendous, and and I come back and get in the fouls, and we just kind of converted at the line. Okay, we got time for one more question. Let's take it right here on the front row. Yeah, Henry, just there, kind of late in the second half. How chaotic did it feel at times, and then in that. Since how important were the two timeouts that, that coach took there and kind of settled things uh, late in the game? Uh, coach does an unbelievable job of you know, using his timeouts. Uh, credit to his assistants, though, who always give him great assistance on um, when to kind of call him and you know, when to use him. But you know, credit to him, he kind of slowed us down. You know, people were able to get a breather. I thought the game was a very fast-paced game, very physical game. And um, everybody just responded. Coach kind of calmed everybody down, you know, showed the plays that we need to run. Uh, how many timeouts we had, you know, whose possession it was. And so credit to him and credit to the assistants. All right, we'll excuse the student athletes. You can return to the locker room. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. And we'll continue on with questions for Coach. Let's start right on the end of the front row. Coach, congrats on the win. Last night after Arkansas won, Eric Musselman was really complimentary of you. Uh, nothing but respect, of course. And I just, the way I see it, you two have a similar temperament, energy on the sideline. What's it like coaching against him in a survive and advance type situation? Yeah, I think, um, I think going into tonight's game, he had won 74% uh, of his games. Uh, incredible job at Nevada. And then what he's been able to do at Arkansas in the four years he's been there is, it speaks for itself. Um, they've been a mirror opponent. We only played them once during the COVID season. Their game at our place was uh, canceled because we had the virus. <clears throat> it requires a lot of study uh, because he puts his players that are ultra talented in great positions to play the way they play. And they put so much pressure on the rim, this year's team. Uh, yesterday they shot 81% at the rim against Auburn, and today they shot 91% at the rim against us. And uh, there is layers to how you get guys to be that successful at the rim. and. Their talent and his skill, I think, is it's the combination of the two. Okay, let's we get front row here. Just hand the mic on down there. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Um, but so many times this year, you've uh, I don't know how many times you've said you've commented about your team doesn't flinch and pressure situations. But did they take it to an, another extreme tonight? Yeah, we were we we were not very good. Uh, in the first half. That's a credit to Arkansas. Uh, for being in foul trouble, I think, is a little unsettling. Uh, we tried to play him offense for defense as best we could. Nine turnovers is not good. Nine block shots is not good. The reason they shot 55% is 18 times we gave them the ball and never got our defense set. And so the compound effect to that is we're playing in a broken floor defensively they're going to shoot and score at a high percentage. And so now all of a sudden, without four playing, now we have to play slower. And so uh, we did a really good job on the glass. I think that we had uh, maybe nine or 10 offensive rebounds in the first half. So when we didn't turn it over, which wasn't often, and when we didn't get a block shot, which wasn't often, we got an offensive rebound. but. We were much more under control, off two feet, 
uh, and being able to get stops so that we can play early offense a little better. We're dependent upon early offense. We're dependent upon offensive rebounds. But to his point, we're also dependent upon free throw makes. If you have that high a turnover rate and that high of a block percentage, you're not going to get offensive rebounds. Very good. And you're for sure not going to get fouled. Go ahead. Yeah, but I had a two-parter, if that's OK. Um, Hog Stats, uh, the website, he's a really reliable stat Say it guy. one more time. There's a website out there called hogstats.com, and he's super reliable. I want to study it. OK. It's, you can follow on Twitter. And um, he, he tweeted out that Arkansas had won 78 straight games and led by 13 or more at halftime, going back to, uh, like, 2007 or so. I have to look Is it that up. right? Yeah. So, obviously, when, when – and they bank in a three, and you're th you know, I'm thinking well, Arkansas is in pretty good shape. Probably a lot of people, but I don't know what you were – what were you thinking, and what do you think about that stat that they'd won 78 straight and you guys broke that streak? I, I didn't know the stat. I, I think that speaks to the first uh, question. Okay. Just really good players and a Hall of Fame coach. I, we were just out of sorts. I, I wasn't necessarily – like I told the team, I wasn't necessarily concerned about Arkansas in the second half. I was more concerned about us at least getting in a position to worry about Arkansas. We, we were never in a groove. That's completely Arkansas. But we had no shot if we didn't get back to more of our identity and more of the recipe that we need to follow. Um, I think our guys understood that. I, I, I think uh, there's multiple, multiple examples of when things weren't right in a game, after a game, they've had the ability to respond. It doesn't necessarily mean the result is going to work out the right way. But our guys, even though that's not a stat, as a group, their response throughout the season has been phenomenal. OK, we've got time for two more questions. Let's take the other one right here on the end, and then we'll go to the middle. Hey, Coach, two questions. Uh, first, what was the importance of those two late timeouts uh, to you? I shouldn't have used the last one. It was 15.8 when I called it. Uh, I, I, I was just anxious. Uh, and I think when we're more calm, we're better. They have to foul. But it was broken floor, bobbled ball. No, let's stop. Uh, I thought the two before that were right, uh, and I thought the execution out of that was good. But the last one, even when I called it, I, I told four, I said, my fault. And G was saying, no, it's great. And I was like, it's only great if you guys finish this the right way uh, because it's side out, and we need to throw it towards their basket so we get the 10 seconds in the backcourt. But that's dangerous particularly when three is guarding four. If, if you don't complete the pass, it's a layup, and now it's a completely different game. Keep going. And then uh, the backstory on the home run kind of pass to, to Tyrese, what, what, how did you draw that yeah, one? Yeah, you, you've seen that a couple of times. Uh, I, think, I think we did it twice earlier in the year. I think one was non-conference and one – maybe both of them were conference play. Um, Drake, Dre's a quarterback, uh, maybe a better quarterback uh, than combo guard. And if he wouldn't have broke his wrist, I think he would have played football at a high level. Um, we knew they were going to foul, and so we're playing with four good free throw shooters. And our press offense is really not designed for four guards. And uh, uh, some of the possessions leading up to that, I didn't think we were really sure in our press offense. I want Ford to have the ball, but I thought Ford made some uncharacteristic decisions over the last minute and a half. And then the last time out was when Boots was, his Baja was out of whack. And so I at least wanted the ball coming towards me. They're more athletic, they're taller, they're longer. We, we need to get the ball out of there. And I, I think there was a timeout prior to that. Either it was – that may have been my third timeout. Oh, it was a review. It was a review. And I just told the guys, hey, we, gotta, we have a name for the call. We have to do this. And, Dre, you're the quarterback. And Boots, you're the wide receiver. And you got to complete the pass. Okay, last question on third row in the middle. 
Henry talked about it a little bit. Uh, what are your thoughts on the energy from Solomon, Andre? And <laughs> it's so pure. Uh, he's grown up so much. Uh, and we've been very reliant on Andy and Solo. I would say throughout the month of February for sure. I thought both of those guys were phenomenal uh, in our first game this month. Uh, uh, Andy has continued to find ways to help us that's not necessarily in the box score. And it's a little bit of an accountability thing. Um, I thought Henry and Jew were combined the worst that they had been at Mississippi State. We subbed Solo and Andy in earlier than normal, and they played great. And I think it holds Henry and Jew accountable. But I think that Dexter Dennis's daily example to mature, competitive learner spirit has really impacted Solo. And I thought in the month of February, he's – He's the funniest person on our team. It's not close. Everybody adores him, but he's had a, a very good 40 days of growth from a maturity standpoint. Understands the value of a possession, has been very accepting of what we need him to do, and has not tried to get outside of that rails, those rails. And it's, I think he had seven rebounds on last Saturday, which were ginormous. And at that time, uh, Henry and Jew had zeros, zero defensive rebounds, zero offensive rebounds, and Solo and Andy were superb. Thank you. Thank you.